Santa Claus, Saint Nicholas, Father Christmas, or Jesus Christ. Dedicated to the born again Christian. Lesson two. We left off. His wealthy parents, who raised him to be a fervent Catholic, is that word? Remember we said the watch words? What were they? Catholic, priest, New York, tradition, image, Coca Cola. Died in an epidemic while Nicholas was still young. He was 15 plus or minus years old. He was then raised by his uncle Nicholas, the Bishop of Pataria, the birthplace. Nicholas was ordained by his uncle to be a priest. Oh, so the man that foundations the beginning of Santa Claus is a Roman Catholic priest and you want to call me prejudice it's right there in the New Testament there are priests 70 times priesthood 7 times priests plural 83 times and priests as in ownership 6 times and not once does the Apostle Paul write priest, priesthood, priest, or priest in his epistles. Matthew has 27 verses. Mark has 22 verses. Luke has 23 verses. John has 21. Acts has 25. Hebrew, talking to Hebrew people and about Jesus Christ, the high priest. Melchizedek, the priest, 34 verses. 1 Peter 2. Uh, 1 Peter, two verses. Revelation, three times for a total of 157 verses in the New Testament about priests. The priests of the New Testament were the ones that gave the Lord Jesus Christ a tough time in the Gospels. Having rebelled against him, handing him over to the Roman, gov Roman, Roman government, Roman Catholic Church, they're the ones that sent his Jesus Christ to the cross to be crucified. In the book of Acts, they were persecuting the apostles and the Christians, the priests. Hebrews speaks of the Old Testament priesthood and Jesus Christ, who is our high priest. The book of Revelation speaks as Christians, born again, Bible believing Christians as priests. No one who wears their shirt on backwards. But we are not under the Old Testament priesthood. Our sacrifices are spiritual. Our priesthood is not a government organization such as the Roman Catholic Church that has their own government, their own postal stance, their own army, their own ruler. Our ruler is Jesus Christ. Their ruler is the Pope. They want land. We want New Jerusalem. We can keep on going, but we're not. Emperor Diocletian, D I O C L E T I A N, banished in prison Nicholas. So now he, you know, now he's getting persecuted. Upon his release, he re he attended the Council of Nicaea, N I C E A E. The Roman Emperor Diocletian commanded all the citizens of the Roman Empire, which included Asia Minor, to worship him as God. Well, that's what the Pope does. Today, he's called the Pope. The Emperor carried out the threat, and Saint Nicholas, who resisted, was also in prison. Well, I'll give the guy that much credit. He didn't honor a man like millions of Christians honor a man today. And it's not the man Christ Jesus. For more than five years, and in 1313, when Dicean, whatever his name is, resigned, Constantine, oh, there's the Roman Catholic, came to power. Nicholas was released, and he returned to his post as Bishop of Myra. So, 
Roman Catholics end up in jail too. And this one, not worshiping a man. Give him credit. I'll give him credit where credit's due. Mr. Nicholas attends the first council of Nicaea. Uh-oh. That's a Roman Catholic. Although no written, written record from the council with his name as an attendee. So he is said to go, but there's no records of him going. So And signs. Circumstances suggest that Nicholas Amira attended the Nicene Creed. But then again, maybe he didn't. In 325 AD, there are historians that print as a fact he signed, even though we don't know. But as a fact, they're not sure, but as a fact. Well, I think that a turtle is a 1968 Ford Mustang convertible. I know that's a fact, but I'm really not sure according to the encyclopedia, but. Who knows? The Creed of the Nicaea states. Now this is the Creed of Nicaea that supposedly Mr. Nicholas went to and supposedly he signed. Now this is quotes from the sea. We believe in one holy Catholic and osteopathic church. Unquote. Well, that's kind of bigoted, isn't it? One Catholic church? On the succession of the apostles from Peter to the Pope which is a lie uh, you know you know another stated fact but that's not true no Baptist churches no Methodist churches no Jewish synagogue no Lutheran da 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 again it sounds kind of bigger bigoted to me that there's this one church only Jesus Christ has been so bold to say I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the Father, not by the church, but by him. So either Jesus Christ is the way, or the Catholics are the way. Somebody's lying. I'll take the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet Mr. Nicholas was present and spokesman of this statement, so they say. Well, he was living, a, so whether he's there or not, the statement of this creed was to be read, and he didn't sign anything or petition, or he refused to worship the emperor as a man, but he wouldn't refuse this document to say that there's only one holy church. So some say that he did sign this thing. So the question is, as Santa Claus, does he visit only Roman Catholic children? Or does he visit all denominational children? While his creed of his church, whether he was there or not, his church says there is one holy Catholic church. And if he, if he visits Baptists, Methodist, Jewish, Lutheran, agnostic, atheist homes. He is apostate by his own church. He is anatha. He means cursed by his own church. Eastern and Western churches honor him. Catholic from east to west. Mr. Nicholas is said, since he's a dead Roman Catholic Church saint, to have his relic How can he say if it's Well, his relic is called manna. What's the manna? <laughs> and is with manna and is pure water from his tomb. Well, how can he say if he's, if he's in a tomb? Some have said it is to have healing power. That's all, folks. 
Now he's charismatic. This guy is multicultural under a church that says there's one holy church. Pure and dead do not mix. It is called manna and pure water from his tomb. That's an oxymoron. Some, 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 yeah, say, some, say, ooh, boy, that's there. But it's not always the fact. Manna, Bible, Exodus 16, 15. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, it is manna. But they wished not what it was. What is this thing? I don't know. That's what the name of manna was. That's what it meant. That, that little bread on the ground. What is it? That's the name. What is it? And Moses said unto him, this is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat, Exodus 16:31. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. And it was like coriander seed, white, and it tastes, it was to be eaten. It tasted as it was like wafers made with honey. Exodus 16:35. And the children of Israel did eat manna 40 years until they came in the land inhabited and did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. Numbers 11, 9. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Joshua 5, 12. And the manna ceased on the morning after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Cana that year. But the manna came back for a dead man in his tomb. Psalm 78, 25. Man did eat angels' food. Where did they get that one from? Angels' food coming from a dead man's uh, corpse. Oh, like devil's food. He sent them for meat to the full. Manna is the Bible is not water. It's bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I'm the water of life. But they could not get the manic, the manna relic. can't say that in one bit. They couldn't get it right. It is pure water. Uh, no, not according to the Bible. It's called bread. It tastes like honey. It's even described in the Bible. You missed that one. You don't study your Bible. Shut up and go to hell. Ooh. Judge not. We should be judged. Um, Jesus is the life. The manna of St. Nicholas. Where can you find that in the scriptures? Which was once commonly called oil. Not wait a minute. Is it manna? Is it water? Is it oil? Is it a lie? But is in the point of fact transparent Pure water. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's read the Bible again. Let's read the Bible. Uh, Exodus 16, 31. Exodus 16, 31. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Verse 1625, Exodus again. This is the bread that Moses said, this is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. They say, the point of fact, transparent, pure water. Somebody is lying. And I am not going to say it's God in this Bible. That is formed in the tomb. <coughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, let's read again. Oh, where was it? Trying to find. Hold on. Numbers eleven nine. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the in the night, the manna fell upon it. Pure water is formed in the tomb of Mister Nicholas. I'm kind of confused here. Kind of meet the Bible with tradition and you know, burn tradition in the crypt of the Basilica in Bari, B A R I. 
This occur this occurrence is not easily explainable. Yeah, because it's anti Bible. It's a fairy tale. It's a lie. It's once upon a time there was this star that came from a coffin. Oh coffin. Oh Satan. Give us some water from Santa Claus. It is absolutely excluded that there is some kind of excess of water on their brain from the outside for it has been proven that the casket containing the bones of the saint is waterproof. Well, you cannot mix oil and water, so which is it? But God said it was bread. Moses said it was bread. Israel said it was bread. Joshua said it was bread. Psalm says it's bread. The Catholics say it's water. Well, maybe it's oil. Well, maybe, eh. Somebody. This is the foundation of Santa Claus. It's a big, fat, religious lie. And I'm not saying nothing about Nicholas. He's dead. He's lying in his tomb, and now they've got stories. This is not Mr. Nicholas's fault now. This is the church. Twas the night before Christmas and out came the water. No, twas the night before Christmas, out came the water. No, twas the night before Christmas came out. Uh, shut up. There was no proof, no names, no authority to make to what makes them say it's 100% proof. It was just said it's waterproof. You say, what do you mean, Todd? When I studied this and I searched documents, I couldn't find a date. I couldn't find a doctor, I couldn't find a lawyer, I couldn't find a scientist, I couldn't find a priest, I couldn't find anybody who documented by date and year that this casket, coffin, whatever it is, is actually waterproof. It is said to be waterproof, as the priest will say, this is the body of Jesus Christ, and the that's a lie. So when you got lies in your religious service and you tell me that this thing is waterproof, I don't believe you. You know why they today when you bury somebody, they got to put the coffin, a, a nice well-being casket is made, sealed, airtight. You know why they put it in a concrete box? Because within time it'll leak, it'll decay, and they don't want you to go visit your loved one in the cemetery and fall in. So we, or they, of the Roman Catholic Church, must take this by faith. Now what is faith? Faith is a substance of things hoped for. I hope this thing is waterproof. The evidence of things not seen. I've never seen this casket, but i got to take it by faith. Really? All right, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. By the way, his tomb is empty. Santa's tomb still got a body in it producing water, oil, manna. Take your pick. Spin the wheel. I want names. I want evidence. And I want facts. You send them to my address. Facts. Names. Dates. Evidence that I can take to a court before a judge and jury to rule that this evidence is true. Other than that, I don't have any. As Jesus Christ names and the evidence that could prove in reliable, proper courtroom that over 400 people saw Jesus Christ after he was buried from the empty tomb. And it can be documented in a courtroom, and I can't find anybody who found who sees this coffin. The television cop said one time, just the facts. That's what I want. Where are the facts? If there's names and proof, I have not found them. And I tried. Even Thomas wanted proof about the resurrected Christ. My faith is in Jesus Christ, not what man says about a tomb 
of a dead man. And in Mark chapter 5, there was a devil-possessed man that hanged out with the tombs with the, with the dead. Now, why is it called manna? Which meant, in Hebrew, what is it? I don't know. It just happens to be a Bible word. Oh, let's open up our Bible concordance and let's get a message on one word today. 45 minutes on one word. That's exactly what the Catholics did. Let's find a good word. Jesus is the bread. Hey, this is bread. But to get away from the Bible, because we don't want the Bible. We really have to just, we'll call it water, because Jesus is the bread and Jesus is the water. And the Holy Spirit is oil. Oh, look at that. See, Satan knows the Bible. Satan and Jesus in the wilderness had a scripture battle. Satan threw scripture at Jesus, Jesus threw scripture back. Satan threw scripture and Jesus threw scripture back. Jesus and Satan had a scriptural debate. The Bible event of the manna is a supernatural event of God. And he said it was angel food. So, are they the Roman Catholic Church trying to make Mr. Nicholas a God, small g, or an imitation Christ? And now we're going to start seeing the Antichrist in Jesus Christ. The tomb of St. Nicholas. He's dead. Whoever he was, he's dead. Now the church is making him an antichrist because now he's the bread. The manna was bread of God. All right, it's water. Jesus said, I'm the water of life. It's oil. The Holy Spirit is a type of olive oil. It has healing properties. Jesus Christ came and healed during the first advent. St. Nicholas is dead, right? Yes, he's dead. He's got... But doesn't he come out December 25th? Oh, resurrection! Resurrection! Jesus Christ. Another, another Antichrist. And he doesn't come as a line of God. No, he comes as a gift bearer. The gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Roman Catholic Church has used this dead man to bring an Antichrist. And as this video and audios and series is made for Christians, your belief and your bringing Santa to your children, are you now going to continue? Do I need to go any further? I hope not, but I'm going to. That we will see is the motive to make Mr. Nicholas into Jesus Christ. Or another Bible word, Antichrist. Now he's dead. Now the church is going to make him something more than what he is. The Antichrist will die. And he'll be resurrected. Mm -hmm. Now we will begin to dig into Santa. And Santa Claus. And Mr. Nicholas. And Father Christmas. Put your bib on. Get the steak knives out. And enjoy our meat and potato meal from the Word of God and from the world of Satan. There are numerous solutions that are arrived about the manna. What's doing on the manna? What's the manna? <laughs> numerous theories. Number two, a proposed explanation whose status is still conjunctual, subject to experimentation, in contrast to well-established propositions that are regarded as reported, ma reported matters of actual facts. Cinnamons, ideas, notions, hypothesis, antonyms, practice, verification. Oh, that's an interesting word for theory. I don't know. So there are number of solutions about the manna in theories of I don't know. I know about the Lord Jesus Christ. From the dictionary.com that was from. Forward. All right, numerous theories forward, whether supernatural in any or natural justifications of the occurrence. 
Which is it? When it comes to church or religion, the soul needs facts, not notions. Sanctifying through thy uh, through truth, thy word is truth. We need facts. The Bible gives facts and religion gives assumptions and maybes. The manna is an authentic relic. Because it is liquid and remains in contact with the bones of the saint. By the Roman Catholic Church tradition and not Bible facts. I couldn't find a picture of the bones of this man and his, his, his relic. There's no pictures to be found. And therefore explains the very reason why there is such a good re religious zeal springing up from this relic. You mean somebody reported that this is on the bones of this man and that is the proof. Name, date, title, signature, Authority, authority of evidence is what I want. I don't have any. I couldn't find any. Numbers 19.16 Bible again. I'll put the Bible away. And whosoever touches one that is slain with a sword in the open field or a dead body, Mr. Nicholas, or a bone of a man. The manna is authentic relic because it is a liquid that remaineth in contact with the bones of the thing. Or a grave. It comes from his waterproof casket. I'm not saying this. They're saying it. And I'm using the Bible. Shall be unclean seven days. Touching a dead body in the Old Testament was an unclean event and needed the water of separation from the red heifer. If a man did not wash in the water, oh, there's the water, he would be cut off from the nation of Israel. Dead body and issues thereof are unclean. So according to the scriptures, this manna of St. Nicholas is an unclean substance worshipped as a religious relic who do you think is right or wrong from 1980 onwards the manna is formally extracted every may 9th the feast of the translation of the relics from mire to barai by the rector, <laughs> that's a funny name for a director of Basilica, in the presence of the delegates of the Pope. He's already a liar. He already tells lies. I'm supposed to trust his people? I trust him as much as I trust the President of the United States, which I don't. And the Archbishop of Barai. What are his credentials? For all have sinned, come to shore of the glory of God. An orthodox bishop. Who? Who is he? Civil authorities. Oh, really? Yeah. The paid police of the popes. Yeah, I'm going to believe them. The clergy and faithful. After the solemn celebration of the Eucharist. What happens to the night before? Hey, hey, hey. They put a little stuff there to make ah uh, you don't know we're already seeing this stuff is a lie it's unclean so besides these religious hierarchies of the church who else is present when the manna is drawn listen the church is biblically wrong and of john 8 44 read that i call the question any outfit any religious any showtime where there is no witnesses present, I mean not their church, the whole community. Now Saturdays we try to go down to the farmer's market and preach the gospel. 
people can testify, yeah, there is a loud mouth that preaches the gospel. And I can testify there are people that buy plants, that buy fruits and vegetables. It is witnessed by many people who come from many religious backgrounds, if no religious background, but they can testify there's a guy that preaches the gospel and there are people that buy fruit. And the people that see this thing are all of one holy church. Baloney. And pig fat to the Muslims too. I call the question again. Where are the laymen? The, ple the, the, the peasants? Where's the media? Where's Johnny is? Well, we're here live at Santa Claus room to watch them do it. CNN. And it is all by faith in man and his traditions. Traditions. That's a new word. Tradition. God forbid, yea, let God be true and every man a liar. The Catholics put more faith in a man and the church than Jesus Christ in the word. 2 Corinthians 11, 4. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. There's another Jesus. There's another gospel. <coughs> There's another spirit. Verses 14 to 15. And no marvel for Santa, I mean Satan himself, is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore is no great thing if his Satan's ministers also be transformed as minister of righteousness. Holy, holy, full baloney. Whose end shall be according to their works. John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil. That's Jesus that said that. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And bold not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and a father of it. Many stories and legends. Proof. I'll give you my proof. Ready? If you listen to this audio, that silence was the proof. The video, you just watched me look my head around. There is no proof. He worked many miracles. And that's a question mark. Where he said during his life, he was, what was he called? During his life. Where is it? Oh. The wonder worker of miracles. And he was alive when they said that. And he never refuted it. He never came up and me and, and written down and said, No, that's a lie, folks. That is not me. And struggled many years, long years, at his labor, question mark. He was a bishop. It is there is there a diary of Mr. Nicholas that can be made truth to back up what is said? Can we check out his diary and his writings? Was there a counterpart of this man to prove the stories and tales? Mrs. Nicholas, children Nicholas, the altar boys under this man. Maybe you want to know about the altar boys. We want to have to trust Santa Claus. I don't know. Through the prayers of Mr. Nicholas. The city of Myra was rescued from a terrible famine. Upon a Wikipedia search, I could not find anything under Myra famine, but Mr. Nicholas's miracle. I looked under famine in Myra, I could find nothing. But when I looked under Mr. Nicholas and miracle, Oh, up, 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 this famine. Under or upon a Yahoo search engine, engine, city of Myra famine. In quotes, only Mr. Nicholas and his miracle showed up and nothing as a dated fact that this city ever had a, ooh.
That'd be like me saying, yeah, last year, 2015, eight tor eight uh, hurricanes through Daytona Beach, and you, ooh, ooh, hurricanes Daytona Beach, 2015. Nobody recognizes any hurricanes. You're a liar. You're a liar. By the way, no hurricanes came. Thank God. The World Wide Web search engine could not show me any famine that was in Myra in which a man rescued them. But I read in the Bible when Elijah and God caused the land a famine to receive land after three years. If I did a worldwide word, ugh, worldwide web search on Elijah, God, and famine, the information would be found in great detail. And it was. I found more search on Elijah, God, and famine than I find about city of Myra famine outside of Mr. Nicholas. Ooh, we can keep on going. I got a few more. He appeared to a certain Italian, Italian, you mean Papa Pina pull spaghetti ball over there in the room, Italian? Roman Catholic Church shows up to an Italian. Hmm. Merchant, Italian, and there's no name given or mentioned who this guy was and left him three gold pieces as a pledge of payment he requested him to sail to Myra and deliver grain there more than once the saint saved those drowning in sea and provided releases from captivity and imprisonment So he was a lifeguard. In the, and he was a bondsman. Santa, the bounty hunter, tonight, 7 o'clock. It is said that he saved people from famine, spared their lives of innocent accused. And if it's true, where are the document evidence that I can list in this report? That you could say, hey, Mr. Hayward, I want to copy that report. I want to make sure. I want to check it. And you email me. You, you Facebook me, whatever. I'll give you a copy. I'll send you the link that you can print your own copy. And you'll find, and you do your own search, you will not find the evidence. Now you go back to Groton City Police and check the records when I was 16, 17, 18 years old. You might still find there were some speeding tickets because I was a bad boy. The car I drove, the place where I was stopped, and how much I paid, that's a documented evidence. I have documented evidence that my grandfather was born. I've seen the paper. My grandfather married my grandma. I've seen the paper. My grandfather died. I've seen the papers. He worked on people's houses. I've seen the contracts. I've seen the checks. I get, those people are still living. I can go to their house and say, Hi, how you what kind of worker was my grandfather? Can I have your name? And what he did, and he'll be able to fill out a piece of paper. Where is this stuff? Hi, my name is Sailor, whatever, and I was rescued by this man out in the sea. Where is the story? Where is the documentation? Where are the testimonies? Where is the written proof that can be brought before a law court? Let's bring it to court. Let's bring it to an attorney. Say, attorney, here's the evidence. Bring it to court for me. Hearsay is a law term for no evidence in written form. The story of this man and, and Santa Claus is called hearsay. And the judge will not allow it. 
go this a couple more. Webster's 1828 Dictionary, Miracles, number two. In theology, an event or effect contrary to established constitution and courses of things from the known laws of nature, a supernatural event. Miracles can be wrought only by the almighty power. So St. Nicholas is working by God in their story with manna and the story of healing people and the story of being a lifeguard and the story of ending famines they are telling you the church that this guy works by the almighty god as peter james john and paul almost making him an apostle because there are pictures of g of g of, of of Santa kneeling down before Jesus Christ in the manger. Go search it. Baby Jesus and Santa Claus, and you'll see pictures of Santa Claus and an adult kneeling before Jesus. So Santa Claus has been around longer than Jesus. Oh, another Antichrist. Miracles can be only wrought by the almighty power as when Christ healed lepers saying, I will, but that be thou clean or claim the temp or calm the temptest. Remember the sea storm. Peace, be still. They consider not the miracle of the loaves, Mark 6. So, how were three coins of gold delivered to a grain a miracle? Said he appeared to a certain Italian merchant, left him three pieces of gold for a pledge for payment, requested him to sell the mire to, to deliver grain. How? Well, let me see. The Antichrist will imitate Jesus. Shall we see? Let's see the Antichrist work with Jesus work. Now, Italian merchant would be a seaman. Matthew 17, 27, notwithstanding. Least we should be offended then. Go to, or go thou to the sea. Talking to Peter. Cast and hook. Take up the fish that first cometh up. Fish symbol. And when thou hast opened his mouth. Thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give it unto them for me and thee. How many fish have men caught to find exact money that needed to be paid to owe a debt? That's a miracle. How many fish were in all the waters of the world? And Peter caught the right one with the right bait at the right time. And that mouth that mouth was filled with a exact coin. One coin. To pay the debt. And there were names and records. Matthew, a tax collector. Peter, a fisherman. And Jesus, who's God. Recorded. And we'll end here. Ready? He's the patron. Now, let's stop there because we're going to get something there. We'll stop right there. That's a new subject. We'll close right there. So, what do you think about Santa Claus? Mr. Nicholas is dead. And from Mr. Nicholas, we're going to pick up Santa. So, what do you think, Christian? Is it something that you still want your children to believe in? That's between you and God. We got more to go.